I have no idea with what I'm doing with most of the stuff that I'm doing. But the more successful I'm actually getting, the more I'm just realizing that it's a major part of being successful at stuff. And it goes back to this old Socrates quote, which is, all I know is nothing. But looking back at the past 10 years, I've just realized one major thing. Because every time I've taken this one thing, a major leap of growth has happened in my life. And that one thing is risk so for instance moving out of my hometown at 23 felt like a big risk or like having a music studio and an apartment that was really ex both really expensive and working a day job endlessly in order to be able to afford that was a major risk and then quitting my job at 26 to go all in on my businesses was a major risk and then going all in on this print on demand thing because the businesses that i already had wasn't panning out the way i wanted to that was a major risk too but every time I've taken one of these major, major risks in my life and major leaps of faith, things have honestly, they've always figured themselves out, first of all. But apart from that, it just forced me to grow in order to rise to the occasion. But just looking back at like the past 10 years, because I'm like 31 now, I'm, I'm going to be 32 later this year. I've just noticed that every time, like in my 20s, that I've taken a major, major risk, I've always risen to the occasion. It's not been easy by any means. It's been super, super stressful in different parts of it. Like in different parts of that whole journey, I even got like a two times in my 20s, I got half of my face paralyzed and they just call, call it uh, like facial paralysis, or like the Latin word for it. And they do think that it has some causal thing about that is because of stress. And in both of those times, I was really stressed out. So it could definitely have a correlation with stress. But either way, even facing those difficulties and everything that has happened during all those stressful times, I've always risen to the occasion. And it's because of that one thing, which is risk. But one major leap that was really different compared to any other was when I actually quit my day job at 26 to go all in my businesses. And it was honestly really, really hard because I, I had about like six months to a year's worth of savings saved up. And yeah, the businesses that I had at the time, like a more small marketing agency for artists, that didn't really work out at all. I had some, some few clients, but it just was a model where, like a service model where you always have to either pay with your time or find like employees and stuff like that. And I just didn't want to do with that all that hassle. It's just a major time consumer and it just didn't really fit the things that I wanted to head towards, which is basically a really creative life and a really freeing life. That's something that I really value as a person. Plus, I also wanted to make sure that like to not have the time associated with the outcomes of the actual like the job you want to be able to separate those two so that you don't have to put in x amount of hours to actually get x amount of results you want to be able to put in x amount of hours and have that be repaid all the time like continuously because otherwise you're just always stuck in a place where you always have to work in order to actually be able to get paid so to speak at 26 it was super super scary super scary i mean i i it was just insanely scary and um so i can't state enough how how scared i was to take the leap because again it was the only like real security that i had but i had what, six months to a year's worth of money saved up that i could live off of and i did live off that because it didn't really work for, for a long time but as i was didn't work out i tested a lot of things again i took a major risk and i wasn't going to lose on it i was going to make this thing this risk work and worth it so I started to like play around with Fiverr and like sell like music production services and mixing services there. Same thing on Upwork and worked for a little bit, but not that much. And then I found this like weird TikTok talking about Etsy and how you can make a lot of, a lot of sales on Etsy. And that really piqued my interest. So once I actually found that, that whole Etsy TikTok, that led me to the game that I've been the most successful at to this day. But in all due honesty, I had no, really, literally no idea what I was doing. Just like I've had no idea what I was doing in any other part too. I just had no idea what I was doing. But the one thing that I actually knew was that I had to make this work because once the money runs out, I have to have an income from somewhere and it's not gonna be a job that one thing I knew but I had to have some kind of income from something and that thing was what I believed to be Etsy and print on demand and through that I saw different videos I found like an interview of like an old interview of Cassie Johnson and that I just rewatched that whole thing then I just haggled her with like starting something like a mentorship so that I can actually learn from her she did that like back in 2022 I learned a lot from her and that can be like the foundational skills to actually like 
do this whole print on the mount thing because I had honestly no idea how to approach this for like a year. It was just so, so hard. I put up 500 listings a month at one point and I just have, and to preface that, I have over 10,000 listings expired out of all these tests that I've done. But one thing, like I just tested out so much to make this whole Etsy print on the mount thing work. And it honestly took like over a year of like daily constant effort of just focusing on this and just living off of the buffer that I already had to make this whole Etsy print on demand thing work. It was really hard because at one point I just remember that I even had like $500 in my bank account that I lived on. And again, I lived off of like, the, apart from the money saved up and that all I basically had run out at one point, I lived off of the small amount of profit that I actually made from my Etsy store. I basically sold about 3K revenue to 5K revenue a month with a 20% net margin. So basically $500 to $1,000 a month is what I lived off for a full year. It was really, really, really hard. And at one point I basically just had $500 left in the bank account and times were really scary at one point because again, I wasn't gonna go back. I just had to make this Etsy thing work. And just looking back, I had no idea how to do this at all. Like I had no idea about research and like researching through Everbee and getting the master list through Everbee. I had also no idea, like I when I started too, I started, actually started using Printful and Printful was really expensive at the time. They're really like still quite expensive, honestly. But after like six months of just putting, again, 500 listings a month with Printful, I took the hard decision and switched over to Printify because the pricing is so much more better. And overall, the whole experience with their customer service and overall the whole platform is just a lot better in my opinion. Yeah, Printful is still great as a backup, but Printify is definitely like my main go-to as my product for my production partners and stuff like that. But yeah, there was just so many painful and hard decisions that I had to make, especially with switching from Printful to Printify, but also just like realizing that I had no idea what I was doing and I had no idea about research-based designs and that I had to use Everbee in order to get the master list. Just in order to be efficient with my research, I had no idea about that stuff. And it was just so hard for, for up to a, about a year of constant daily effort. And do keep in mind that I was living off of the profits of my Etsy shop. But as I steadily learned and get, got better and got feedback on my whole journey and so forth, I just, things started to look up. Like I started to do research better using Everbee. I also started to do research based designs a lot better and quicker using Everbee. I also like in the beginning, I sold a lot of the Gildan 64,000s and I also like switched over to my, again, research based decisions. So I, instead of doing that, I just saw that the Bella Canvas 3001 was doing just a lot better than the Gildan 64,000. Uh, so I just switched over all of my products to the, to the Bella Canvas 3001 instead of the Gildan 64,000. I just took a more of a research based approach to make this business really work because I had to make it work because I, I stuck with the risk that I had and as I just did that continuously things actually just started to look up even more because in 2023 like a year basically in after I started I took all of the foundational skills that I've, that I've learned for a year because again it was a really tough first year but once I did that I learned some more things on top of the foundational knowledge that I already had and that made me able to scale my shop tremendously. So I went from doing about like 5K revenue a month and then at the later end of the year, maybe like 10K revenue a month. I was still like not doing so great. But in 2023, I learned some more strategies with like some more launching strategies specifically with break-even pricing and profit pricing and using ads more efficiently and so forth. And with that, I was able to scale my shop to $30,000 to $50,000 in revenue a month. So I took some new strategies, implemented new designs again, applied the new strategies, and that just, once I actually implemented all the strategies and the, the whole thing was set, that's when it just went off the rails. I was doing thirty to $50,000 a month in 2023 with a 20% net margin on top of life for that. And then in Q4 alone, so in November and December, I basically did over $100,000 in revenue in November and over $100,000 again in December. Things would just went crazy for me that year. It was just a booming year. And with that boom, it also comes with a lot of growing pains. So it was really stressful as well. And then in 2024, I wanted to like stay, take a step back because again, 2023 was an intense, a super intense year because of all the, of the growing pains. Because again, the more you grow and the more you expand your business, the more growing pains you will feel because things will break, things will not work and you have to, again, rise to the occasion, which I did. Uh, but then in 2024, I wanted to start this YouTube channel, diversify a little bit because I had already hit the goals that I wanted to hit with this print and demand thing. So I diversified to this YouTube thing and started that and focused that mostly on during the year. But still, I earned generally up until like the later part parts of the year, 26K in revenue. Uh, so 26 basically K in revenue with a 20% net margin 
all throughout 2024 with the designs that I made in 2023, which is key to know. Like I didn't list a lot of things in 2024. I just lived off the, the designs that I've already made back in 2023. And at the later part of the year, Etsy restructured a lot of things, uh, especially with the ads. And I had to experiment a lot more with that to make, to make the new ad costs work basically for me. I have a lot of videos on that too on the channel. If you want to watch that, you can watch one of those here. And now in 2025, I'm making a 35% net margin on my designs that I actually sold in, in 2023 because I'm not using any ads. And I'm like, I'm doing it less in revenue, but earning a lot more. So I'm earning about like four, four to 4.5K, somewhere around there in profit a month based on the designs that I made a long while back. This whole thing with Etsy and, and all of this, just looking back, all of this just comes down to doing one thing and just taking this one thing. And that is risk. Like I've never known what, what I was doing with my with anything really. Like I have no idea what I'm doing. And it's that with every single endeavor that, that I'm doing. And I, I can just see that the more I just take this one thing, which is risk, the more I just have to rise to the occasion and grow. Because again, the things that I actually experience, even though they may be really uncomfortable, it forces me to grow because growing pains are not comfortable. That's why they're called growing pains. You have to be willing to fit, be uncomfortable in order to make your own life happen the way you want it to happen. But it does not come from comfort. It comes from being uncomfortable by just doing this one thing and taking this one thing, which is risk. And if you want to see even more of my learnings throughout my whole Etsy journey, I have this one video right here where I actually talk about the learnings that I got from posting over 10,000 listings on Etsy. If you want to watch that next, I think that can give you a great understanding of all the things that I actually learned from posting that many listings. Anyhow, I'll see you in the next one.